Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Sawdust, our weekly vlog about what goes on when the cameras are off here in the Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal shops. We're just days away from the July issue release, and I've been spending a lot of time trying out some new tools. I like to say that testing tools gets a little old, but it doesn't. I love tools. If there's a cool tool out there, I want to try it. Tools are like friends that you can force to do all the hard work for you. And if you make a mistake, you can just blame the tool, because the good ones can take your abuse. A tool never tells you you're stupid, even if you're about to do something stupid. They just cut through the wood, fingers, whatever it takes to get the job done. They're focused. They never take time off. They never complain that you horked the last cold one or sneezed on their lunch. And they speak your language, even the Chinese ones. If I had to choose between some people and some tools, well, let's just say some people are tools, especially the people who borrow your tools so they don't have to buy their own. I don't like people borrowing my tools because the moment they walk away from my workshop with that tool, they suddenly lose their sense of direction and they can never navigate their way back to my workshop to return my tool. Have you ever had someone borrow a tool and then offer to lend it back to you as if it was theirs? Oh yeah, that's happened to me. My neighbor walks with a limp now. The point is, I take my tools seriously, and I enjoy a good tool review. Tool reviews aren't just for serious shoppers. Maybe you aren't in the market for a fancy water-cooled sharpening system or a European beach workbench. I'm not currently shopping for a Lamborghini, but they sure are fun to see. So every month, we try to find a few tools that are interesting, unique, or just plain awesome. And we share them with you so you can say, wow, or check that out, or maybe even drool a little bit with us. I'm not saying you have to own every tool or you aren't a good woodworker. I'm just showing you some cool stuff because it's fun to check out cool stuff. Sort of like show and tell when I was in elementary school, except we don't have G.I. Joes or garbage pail kids or wet pants. What we do have are five awesome tools from five different companies. A couple of the companies are also our sponsors, but I also try to include some tools from places that we've never done any business with. Not that it matters anyway. I'm not going to tell you a tool is great if it's a piece of junk because I'm not a liar. So, what kind of stuff have we been playing with this month? Stick around and find out. This is the Power Chisel by ArborTech. ArborTech is not a sponsor. I just saw this tool and it looked interesting. So I asked them to send us one to try out. I have to admit that I was a little apprehensive when I took it out of the box. It's just so big. And I was afraid it would vibrate too much in my hands. I actually found the opposite to be true. It is big, but not much bigger than a chisel and a mallet together, which is what this thing replaces. I spent a couple hours of carving this portrait with it, and I didn't have any issues with vibration. It was actually very subtle. What wasn't subtle was the noise. This thing is loud, so hearing protection is a must. I don't think that this thing is going to replace all traditional carving tools by any means. I think it's more for removing large amounts of material quickly, or for getting into areas on large carvings that would be awkward with the chisel and mallet. But with a little practice, I was able to do some really detailed work with it, and I did find some real benefits to using it that may surprise you. You'll see more in a video about portrait carving in the July 2016 issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. I'm also intrigued by the straight chisel attachments that are available. I'd like to see how those can be used in place of traditional chisels and woodworking joinery applications. Can you effectively chop mortises with it? What about when you're pairing out between your dovetails? I want to try these things out, so stay tuned. Another tool I was playing with this week is this dovetail jig sent by a YouTube woodworker named Jonathan Katz Moses. I've seen similar jigs before, but this one is different. It guides you throughout the entire dovetailing process. Strong magnets keep your saw at the perfect bevel for cutting tails, at the matching angle for cutting pins, at 90 degrees for cutting shoulders, and it even guides your chisel for chopping perfectly perpendicular to the workpiece. I did find that it doesn't work well with some western dovetail saws, particularly the common Veritas saws. The spine strikes the jig before you can cut deep enough for three quarter inch stock. But it worked really well with my Japanese pole saw. We'll talk more about it in the future video while we use it to cut different dovetail joints by hand. In the meantime, I've also been trying out a couple of new cutter heads for my jointer and planer, which I got from MyWoodCutters.com. These both feature four-sided carbide cutters, but the planer's cutters are wrapped around the head in a helical pattern, while the jointer's cutters are aligned in a V shape. You think that difference will affect their performance? That's what I intend to find out. But first, I had to install the things, and I admit that I was more than a little intimidated. 
I lost the instruction manual for my jointer and planer years ago, and the ones I found online didn't show how to remove the cutter heads. There was no installation instructions that came with the new heads, which is understandable because every woodworking machine is different. They can't make manuals for everything. So I started tearing into my joiner, hoping I would figure it out as I went along. And you know what? I did. It wasn't that difficult. Once I removed the fence and dust shield, I could see the two bolts that held the old cutter head in place. It lifted right out and the new head, which came with bearings already installed, slipped right into its place. I did have to use a puller to remove the pulley from the old head so I could put it on the new one, but that was easy enough. I was really impressed with the quality of the machining on these new heads. It was a perfect fit for my machine. The whole process took a little over an hour, and that's only because I hadn't done it before. The planer though, that's a different story. I don't know about other machines, but the people who designed my Delta clearly did not expect its future owner to upgrade the head, or they did and they just thought it would be funny to make it as difficult as possible. <laughs> I had to tear the thing apart and there was stuff that wasn't even near the head that had to be removed so that other things could come off, so that things that were near the head could be disassembled, and finally the head slipped out. But that's when the real problems began. Even though the new head came with bearings, I had to get the old bearings and pulley off the old head so I could reuse the flanges and the pulley on the new one. And there was no way my puller would fit into the tiny gap I had to grip onto. I had to go buy a special bearing puller. The good news is, this may not be a problem on your planer, depending on how it was designed. And even if it is, you can rent pullers at many auto parts stores for a lot less than buying one. Anyway, I got the thing back together, which is a miracle considering how many parts I had scattered around the shop. So I've got both cutter heads installed in both machines and running right now. We'll be making a video about the results of our comparison shortly, but I will say that these things are both amazing. They cut cleaner than my old steel knives. The carbide will stay sharp much longer. The cutters are so much easier to change than my old joiner knives were. And wood that was prone to tear out is now much easier to plane. There are some downsides to these heads. They take more power to run and they're expensive, but we'll talk about all that and how the helical head appears to the V-shear head later. Another cool tool I've been playing with this month is the Point to Point MK2, which was sent to us by M-Power. It doesn't look like much, but this is a very useful layout tool. As you expand it, the eight points on each side maintain an equal distance from each other. So say you want to lay out shelf pin locations on a board, or you want to put a row of hooks or pegs on something that are all evenly spaced, whether they be one inch apart or four inches apart. At first, I thought the uses would be minimal, but when I started thinking about how often I want to divide something into equal parts, I began to see how handy this thing could be. Maybe I want a row of screws or nails located evenly. Maybe I'm edge gluing a panel with dowels or biscuits and I want to lay those out. It can even be used to evenly divide a board into equal pieces, and I'm pretty sure I could use it to help me lay out my dovetails. I've used several Empower tools in the past and the quality is excellent, so this one may be something you should check out. I believe they sell for under 25 bucks. Finally, I have something from Harbor Freight. Yes, Harbor Freight. I love Harbor Freight for some things. I didn't intend to buy this tool, but I'm glad I did. It's the bearing puller that I used when I installed the cutter head on my planer. I opted to buy rather than rent because I have to remove pulleys from time to time on motors I use to build homemade woodworking machines. In the past, I used a Harbor Freight pulley puller, but I always found it awkward, especially with small pulleys, and if the pulley was too close to the motor on the shaft, it wouldn't work at all. This one works a lot better, and it was a lifesaver for me. They sell a couple of different kits, but I like this one because it comes with large and small sizes, so it's much more versatile. I think it was around 50 bucks. I don't know how long it's going to hold up, but it seems to be pretty well built. If I was an auto mechanic, professionally I may go with a better one, of course, but for the occasional use here in our shop, this does the trick. Well, that about wraps things up for this special show and tell edition of Behind the Sawdust. This video was sponsored by some great people. They didn't tell me what to say, they didn't even know I was making this video. Heck, they may even cringe at some of the things that come out of my yapper. But they help us pay the bills, and in exchange I ask you to go visit their websites via the links in the description below the video. Not only are they great people, but they make great products, so it's win-win. 
Be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal, our monthly digital magazine full of tips, projects, tutorials, and even some common tools. You can subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Now it's time to sit back and have a cold one, because you earned it, my friend.